Before we start, I would like you all to consider a question. What marks humans apart from animals? We, Homo sapiens, are only a small branch under a vast tree of organisms. And in fact, our biological composition isn't that special at all. What characteristic has enabled us to stand out from a stunning array of diversity and almost dominate the Earth as we see today? Some say it's the ability to think, to create thoughts, ideas, and feelings. But animals have these too, as at its base, thoughts are merely the firing of neurons in our brains. Some others believe it's the ability to use tools, but tools are common in the animal domain too, though much more preliminary. Yet others say that the answer lies in self-cognition. But recent research has shown that many animals, including dolphins and chimpanzees, recognize the concept of self. Then how really are we different? Or are we really that much special at all? The key difference, I believe, lies in our incredibly outstanding abilities to influence. And how we do so? Through language. So today I'm going to explore a bit on what exactly this amazing tool is, how it has shaped us, and how we can use it to influence and impact. But first, what do we mean when we speak of influence? The definition given by Merriam-Webster is to affect or alter by indirect or intangible means. We can roughly divide influence into two types, verbal influence and nonverbal influence. Both humans and animals use both these types of communication. Nonverbal influence includes gestures, expressions, chemical signals, and movements. From the chemicals of ants to the dances of bees, this type of communication is largely dominant in the animal domain, and in some ways, our human methods are actually not as developed. Now, verbal influence, however, is where we as humans make a difference. Verbally, through language, we are constantly utilizing sound waves to convey complex messages and ideas. Of course, it is no doubt that animals communicate verbally as well. For instance, Birds chirp to warn their companions of danger from predators, and cats growl to threaten their opponents. But that doesn't mean they have language. In fact, defining language can be a bit difficult. When you think about it, there are two characteristics that stand out as especially important. The first is the ability to express more abstract and complex ideas that go beyond the physically existing. The verbal and nonverbal communication of animals uses what we call signals. A signal points a word to an object. Pointing and screaming at an advancing predator, for instance, is an example of a signal. Now, human language, in addition to signals, also uses what we call designators. A designator also points a word to an object but the difference is, is in that that object may be an abstract idea or something not physically existing. Back to the predator example, an animal may easily understand its companion if they scream and point at an advancing predator, but that same scream may result in confusion without its physical existence. It is even more so with human language. The letters P-R-E-D-A-T-O-R has nothing to do with an actual predator, and I can talk to you about predators without there having to physically be one around me. This ability to go beyond concreteness is very important when deciding whether something can be considered language or not. The second important point to note is a high degree of organization. Language isn't random words stuffed together or random sounds scattered all over the place. If I say right now, doc me you capi car, they do not connect together to form a coherent thought. For something to be considered language, they must follow some sort of rule or organization that makes it standardized, replicable, and comprehensible. Therefore, language, for our purposes, can be defined as the systematic use of designators or the rule-based use of abstract signs. Influencing, therefore, occurs when we are not directly crying run anymore, but rather utilizing the system in causing an indirect spark in one's mind. 
It's pretty amazing. I have a thought. I make my vocal cords vibrate, sending pulses of wave through the air where they are received by your ears, and somehow I can magically make you think what I want to. In this way, language has also made us unique, shaping the development of our society in significant ways. Right now, I am speaking to you all in language and influencing and putting new ideas and thoughts into your brains. I hope. I can ask you all to close your eyes and imagine, say, a flying pig dancing a rainbow and thinking about its history homework, and you will all be able to do so. You probably wouldn't have ever had this thought before once in your life, but here I am reaching into your brains and putting the thought in there. That's how influential language had be. This ability of spreading ideas by influence allows us to learn the wisdom of those before us. Instead of being confined to the individually gained experience that dies with the individual, in this way, our society can build upon the past and reach for higher futures as an entire species, and is set the base for scientific developments. Further, through the exchange and meeting of new ideas, there can be sparks of innovation and birth of new ideas that catalyzes our exponential intellectual development. Another one of the most interesting ideas to me is how language can shape one's perspective of the world. These two pictures have always been particularly interesting for me. Look at the picture on the left. Which point is different? Well, we'd say the one on two o'clock, of course, right? But the Hemba tribes of West Africa wouldn't be able to see a difference in the two o'clock point. To them, the eight o'clock point. Has just an obvious difference as the two o'clock one does to us, because their language has very specific words for different shades of green, but not for blue. Similarly, Russians, English people, and Japanese people have different divisions of blue and green, which turned out to affect their abilities to distinguish colors on the borderlands. And so I was thinking, if language affects how we see and think of colors. Why wouldn't it affect our perspective of the world as well? Between different groups of animals, difference in grammatical gender, number, direction, time, and many more have resulted in subtle differences. But compared to animals, our extensive vocab and ability to go beyond concreteness perhaps has also made us more understanding of complex and abstract ideas, attentive to details, and innovative than other animals are. In other words. Language has enabled us to think and create. Together, through influence, exchange, thinking, and communication, language has catalyzed the development of our human society and shaped the world as we know today. See, it is kind of like a cycle, because it gives us the ability to influence and more. It has also influenced us in such notable ways. And perhaps we can take it to influence even more. We as humans are given such a privileged tool, with language, and nowadays with the amplifier of the internet, spreading an idea has never been easier. One of the best ways to do this, in fact, all we have to do is speak up, speak up, voice our ideas. Let us transform our ideas from the intangible into a tangible form, and let it influence and spread. We are all young in comparison to Earth age of 4.5 billion years and the countless centuries of evolution. The future belongs with us, and as humans, let us take this unique gift of influence to make a difference in the world. Thank you.